All right. So, as I mentioned, my name is Barrett. I'm the program manager for our high school programs in Paris. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this wonderful destination. Um, so again, please um, feel free to add any questions to the chat box. We'll be um, checking that out so we can respond to any questions that, um, that you have about the program. Um, our wonderful map of, uh, of France, you can see uh, where Paris is if you've never been before. Um, so we've got a great photo of one of our students from this past summer here. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the reasons why um, um, France is such a wonderful destination um, and specifically within France, Paris. Um, fantastic food, um, so much so that UNESCO actually um, protects um, um, the food here as uh, cult um, cultural heritage. Um, the language, especially for those of you interested in the language and culture program, you know, there's really no better way to learn a language than to immerse yourself um, in it. And so, you know, from taking language class to living with a host family, um, you know, I'm always impressed by how much our students um, progress in terms of their language skills in a couple weeks. Um, and even for students interested in the, the um, the Fashion in Paris program, um, you will have functional French classes. Um, and so, you know, despite the fact that the fashion classes will be taught in English, um, you'll have opportunities to really be um, pushing your language skills as well. Um, and history, regardless of, um, you know, what era of history you're most interested in, um, Paris has so much to offer from monuments and museums, um, you know, to just even wandering the streets. Um, and of course, the people, um, you know, we can all access so much, um, so many resources online, but there's really nothing that beats, um, you know, wandering the streets with other Parisians. So oh, this is a photo of some of our students from this past summer. We um, uh, we had our orientation lunch um, at uh, um, uh, the De Magot, which is a very famous um, restaurant in Paris, a uh, long literary history um, where a lot of writers would, um, um, would go and meet and discuss. Um, and so students got to dry a coque monsieur or a um, grilled ham and cheese. Um, so that was our group from like session one uh, from this past summer. Um, you know, so um, eating your way through Paris, um, that's how a lot of us love to be discovering the culture locally. Um, and our staff has so many recommendations of places that they love. Um, we'll also be, you know, um, doing some things together, cooking classes, um, you know, foodie tours, things like that. Um, public transportation in Paris is fantastic. Um, it's really easy to, to get around the city using public transportation. Um, uh, for those of you that are accustomed to driving to school, it's, it's a cultural adjustment, but, um, uh, you know, even students, I think, that are nervous about um, transitioning to a public transportation system during their time here, um, you know, transition in a couple days, and they really feel like pros getting around the city. Um, history and culture in Paris. Um, really, you know, there's a, there's a visit a museum um, for everyone. Um, you know, I put a couple a couple here, the Cinematheque um, for people who love um, film history. Um, they've got all sorts of events. Um, a new museum, the Liberation Museum, um, uh, that really goes through the resistance movement in France during World War II the famous Musée d'Orsay for fans of an impressionist art, um, the Palais Galliera uh, for those interested in the, um, the fashion program. Um, they have an incredible collection of, um, um, of um, clothing, um, you know, dating back centuries, um, but then also, you know, even fairly contemporary visits as well, um, exhibits. And again, our staff is, you know, um, we love giving suggestions of our favorite things to do. And we love hearing from students, you know, things that they discover during their free time. 
So this picture is a couple of our students from last summer in front of the Sacré Coeur, um, uh, just after doing a little neighborhood tour and scavenger hunt. Um, so our programs um, include uh, language or content class, depending on whether you're interested in language and culture programs, that's um, you know, three hours of French class a day, or the fashion, um, uh, the fashion in Paris course, um, so a design class um, with different interactive workshops. Um, uh, and really our goal is, you know, that the learning just doesn't remain in the classroom. It's really meant to follow you throughout the day. Um, so workshops later in the day to be, you know, putting those grammar skills to use in um, real world settings, um, you know, for the fashion program maybe, you know, visiting a fashion school and learning what it's like to be a, you know, design student in France. <clears throat> and then um, students get a break for lunch. Um, and then we continue on to cultural activities and excursions. Um, so this photo was just one of, uh, one of those cultural activities. And then um, after those, some free time to explore the city on your own. Um, of course, as I said, we always have suggestions for students at the ready um, in the neighborhood that, um, you know, we finished our activities at. Um, and then um, evening meals, either with um, host families for our language and culture program or else um, uh, um, at the residence for um, fashion, uh, for the fashion in Paris students. So again, I think this was our group 2B um, students from this past summer, hard at work um, in French class. Um, so as I mentioned, um, everyone will get an opportunity to be taking French classes, obviously language and culture, um, a more intensive experience with three hours of language class a day. Um, but I find that students really adapt quickly. Those that aren't used to a block schedule, three hours can seem really long, um, but our, um, our teachers who are all native French speakers are really fantastic at um, you know, making the curriculum fun and interactive. Um, really project-based, um, so you're not just sitting sort of, you know, memorizing grammar rules. Um, you're putting it into action, um, relating it to current events, um, you know, arts. I know um, there's one level that um, does a little challenge sort of based on the voice, um, the French version, learning about music in France. Um, so it is really um, a fun and interactive experience in the classroom. Um, and the same will be true for um, our design class, um, you know, really making um, French fashion history come alive, learning about, you know, the, the French designers, um, you know, who really helped um, build the fashion industry um, today, um, and also, you know, doing challenges, really getting some hands-on learning experience as well. Of this photo. This was actually a couple of our students visiting a local bakery um, and learning um, about the the <laughs> um, the chef Didier. Um, the baker, sorry, Didier um, is holding a huge um, uh, plaquette <laughs> of butter, um, and it's something that um, you know certain products that only you know bakers or pastry um, chefs can um, can access in France. Um, and he gives it to the students to show them how heavy it is generally. Um, so Os de Francais, um, these are our language and cultural activities where we're really putting um, your language skills um, to practice. Um, and so this is it's getting to talk to an expert in his field and learn vocabulary all around um, food and cooking um, and uh, you know, fun surprise getting to eat some croissants at the end. If I may, uh, Barrett, what's Please? just to build on what you're saying, what's impressive because I visited that program uh, and a few, uh, over the years. And what's really impressive about the language programs is that all activities are run in the target language, even mm -hmm. with uh, lower level students. So yeah. I think for the French programs, you need to have at least one year of high school French, but you know that 
you know, the, your level after one year can, can vary. Um, and despite that, all of the activities are run really fully in French. Uh, so of course you have program leaders who are there to kind of like help, uh, mm -hmm. help you along the way, make sure everybody understands. Uh, but the immersion is very real for everyone, even if you're um, just a beginner or novice learner. Um, so I think it's important to know that, to kind of know what you're stepping into, yeah. but it's also um, great because uh, the students just make a huge progress by leaps mm -hmm. and bounds on the program because everything is really rent to French. So before you know it, you'll be dreaming in French. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said, we're so impressed at the progress that students make during their stay. Um, you know, in the as you can see in the photo, you know, the objective is also to make it fun. Um, uh, and so, you know, that's where program leaders are there to support you and remind you of, you know, vocabulary and, you know, catch you up to speed. Um, um, but yeah, I think students are really, um, are really pleasantly surprised at how much, uh, how much they understand. Um, and really because you're surrounded by the language, you know, from morning to evening, from, you know, um, time with host family to time in the classroom to, you know, debriefing with your program leader, um, visits around the city, maybe grabbing a, a coffee on a terrace during your, um, uh, during your time off, um, which is really fantastic. And then also knowing that, um, you know, we'll be providing functional French um, classes for our Fashion in Paris program um, so that, you know, you're really feeling like you're able to be independent and autonomous. Um, so giving you those skills so that you can order on your own in a restaurant so that you can navigate the metro system um, confidently. Um, make sure you're getting the skills and, and coming back with a different appreciation um, for the language. Hmm. So I got some great photos here. Um, so these are a couple of examples of our different cultural activities. Um, yeah, we've got some photos um, from the past couple years um, up here. Um, so the middle one you can see is from our um, boat tour on the Seine. That's usually one of our favorite activities um, during orientation week. It's a fantastic week to get everyone together, see the city, so you can see sort of the different geography, um, um, how the city's organized, and um, spend some time with the whole group. Um, pastry workshop. Um, we've had students, we don't have a picture, but um, students who made um, cream puffs and eclairs um, and really got to um, get some advice from French chefs, um, which they really loved. Um, a street art workshop. So we actually partner with a local street artist um, um, and he's the one who um, um, help students create their own murals. Um, so it gives them sort of a lesson on, um, um, you know, different graffiti techniques um, and then helps them come up with a concept, realize it. And at the end, um, they have their own mural that usually stays up for, you know, maybe a week or two before somebody else comes and um, creates their own mural on top of that. Um, and what else? Uh, in the corner, we've got a visit of some students to a digital art visit um, called the Atelier des Lumières. Um, we do lots of neighborhood tours. Um, um, yeah, to museum visits as well. Um, and, you know, anything from a scavenger hunt to um, you know, a place where we can grab the best croissants in Paris, um, really making sure that, you know, we're showing you around the whole city. Um, our goal is, is to introduce you to as many, um, Parisian and close suburb, um, neighborhoods as we can. And again, um, you know, creating those links through what you learned in the morning, making it relevant, um, really relevant throughout the day. of one of our one of our students with her host family grabbing a um a drink on the Seine River a coca um so um this slide is for language and culture program um all students uh live with local host families um uh in Paris or in um close surrounding suburbs 
Um, our families are, you know, excited to meet students, excited to have international exchanges um, and, you know, know how to be working with the language level that you're at um, so that they can um, exchange with you about what you did that day and, um, you know, um, enjoy meal times together. Um, you have a free weekend with them as well, um, where they'll often organize activities, um, you know, outings that you can do together. Um, they provide breakfasts and dinners and then meals over the weekend. Um, families look, you know, different from, um, you know, maybe retired couples to uh, young families with children. Um, um, all sorts of people, but all really, um, yeah, passionate about welcoming um, American students into their homes. And then for our Fashion in Paris program, um, we um, host students in a local residence um, on a, a metro line. Um, so these students will be living together with their fellow students as well as with um, program leaders. Um, and all meals will be covered um, as well, um, but they won't be with host families. They'll be with um, uh, local restaurant partners. Um, and so, um, have the opportunity um, after meals and in the evening to be spending time together, sort of debriefing the day's activities, um, working together on projects and assignments, and having some downtime before um, before the next day's activities. And this is a fun photo of a couple of our students from the past summer um, with their program leader, Barb. So a couple of reminders before I open it up to questions. Um, um, if you finish your application by December 1st, you'll be entered um, uh, to win, uh, for a chance to win a free flight. Um, so um, definitely take advantage of that offer. As well, if you know any past students, um, you can reach out to them um, to um, save some money. Uh, by using their alumni referral link. Um, and we've got lots of um, virtual fairs going on. So if there's a couple of programs your list is, that you're interested in, um, feel free to check out that link. Um, and then as always, reach out to our team. Um, if you think of your question, maybe after the um, after the session, um, you know, feel free to, to reach out to our team, our US-based team, um, where we can field uh, Field any of your questions. Is any alumni on actually? I, there's a few of you with a phone number, so I'm not sure we we're supposed to have a couple of alumni dial in. I'm not sure any of you are on at this point. Do you want to stop sharing maybe? Yeah. Barrett, we can. Nice. Does anybody have a question for, for Barrett and I? Again, Hi. you are for. I I do actually. Um, hi. Hi. Am I correct in thinking that even if um, my daughter were to go uh, for the fashion program, sh would she still need that freshman year of French? No. No. You the, the language requirement is just for the language program. Thank you for asking that. If she has some French, I think she'll definitely be able to use it. Okay, yeah, um, bonus. Absolutely. It's kind of bonus. Yeah, I think it will make the experience better, but it's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Does she have any French? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. <laughs> it's our first year running the, the fashion program. We're super excited because uh, I think it will give the opportunity for a lot of students who want to discover France and Paris. It will allow them to do that even though they don't have, they don't meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes, Toby, go, uh, feel free to unmute and chat. Hi, um, my daughter's in French four and she's really excited. She's um, the sophomore in high yep. school, really excited. We're wondering how, is it only four weeks or are there two week? What are, what are, what's the amount of time? Yeah, sessions are four weeks long. 
Um, for the language. Yeah, for the language and culture, three weeks for the fashion in Paris. Right. And then if um, her dad and I were trying to figure out if, if she does this, you know, can we, how do the flights work? It, mm-hmm. Does she fly with the cohort or do we go yeah. to her and then pick her up? How does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. So we have, um, we do have some group flights um, that are offered out of, you know, sort of larger hub airports. Um, but otherwise, um, I believe, sure. and Pierre, maybe if you want to yeah. jump in and talk about I was going to say like this year, we, we request that all flights are booked through our travel agent that's called yeah. Flight Fox. Um, and with Flight Fox, you'll be either able to book your independent flight at a time that's convenient for you or join a group mm-hmm. uh, as part of a group flight, which is what most students choose to do. So the way those group flights work is that we will probably communicate around February around the hub airports where um, students can gather in the U.S. to then fly together uh, to um, to Paris. The name of the travel agent, it's Flight Fox. Priscilla, I see that you're asking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it means that if you live like far from uh, a big dom- like domestic hub like New York or San Francisco or Chicago, usually those are the, the three hubs that we use. I mean, you can depend year on year. We do Atlanta sometimes. But if you live in a smaller town and need to fly to a hub, so that flight you'll do alone, but then you'll meet at the gate of the international flight departure, you'll meet um, a program leader in the group so that you guys can do the whole international flight together, go through immigration together, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then any students that are, um, you know, that have booked through Flight Fox, but that are not on a chaperoned flight, um, you know, we go through our pre-departure orientation and we explain to students where um, CIE Paris staff will be located to receive students when they arrive. And they'll also have um, our emergency phone number so they can give us a call if they're, you know, they've arrived and they're not sure where to go. There's a couple of and unless you have more questions on the flight, there's a couple of good questions in the chat about mm-hmm. uh, host family screening and then also sure. free time, like Let's what happens on evening. Yeah. And so uh, um, host families, yes. Um, so um, um, we have an existing um, network of host families um, and new host families come to us, um, you know, whether they've heard of CIE through word of mouth or whether we've sent out an announcement. Um, they are um, anyone who's 18 or older um, is required um, living in the home um, is required to send us a background check. Um, we do safety visits um, and home visits. Um, um, and go through um, um, requirements for students during their stay. We also do orientations and talk to them about culture shock, um, you know, common questions that they may get from students, um, how to be helping students with um, um, communication, especially with the language. So, you know, helping them to stay um, helping everyone to stay in French, um, target language here, as much as possible. Um, and um, so it really is a, a um, um, yeah, a thorough process. Um, let me up. Uh, for language program, yeah, free roaming in the evenings. That's a great question. So we do have um, uh, during the week, um, so Sunday evenings through Thursday evenings for the language and culture program, um, students have an earlier curfew because they're expected um, to eat dinner with their host families. Um, so in the past, it's been 8 p.m. Um, um, and then um, the expectations is that they would um, be spending the rest of the evening with their host families, either at the host family's home or if the host family is going out, then being um, with the, the host um, parents, the adults at the home. Um, and really that, you know, it's, it's to, um, you know, be encouraging them to be exchanging um, and, you know, spending together, time together as a family. And then on the weekends, um, 
they have a, a later curfew of 11 p.m. Um, where students um, can be out a little bit later enjoying the city. <clears throat> there are weekend activities. There's one um, for the language and culture program. There's one day trip as well as one weekend excursion. And then there's one weekend where host families organize activities. Um, and then during the time, about the, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, program leaders are in touch with students. So, um, you know, making sure everyone's back by curfew, um, that sort of thing. So no one's sort of just roaming the city all night. There was a question about where the classes happen. So they happen at the, at the CA study center, but can you remind me what neighborhood is it? I know it's super well located, but I know yeah, you guys in the in the sixth arrondissement. Oh, yeah. um, so the Saint Germain des Prés neighborhood. It's it's beautiful and incredibly historic. Um, it's it's you know a pretty fantastic neighborhood to spend time in. Um, curfews for fashion programs um, will depend somewhat based on our um, restaurant partners. Um, um, but they'll most likely look um, somewhat similar, um, an earlier curfew during the week and then a later curfew um, on the weekend. Um, you know, we want students to be fresh. We have long days, um, you know, they're fun days, um, but they can be tiring. And so we wanna make sure that everyone's getting enough rest to really be making the most of classes and activities. Um, but again, that will depend a little bit based on um, meals, whether they're um, at the residence or at um, a local restaurant partner that's close by. So um, the question about whether you can choose to live in a residence or a host family is actually by program. Um, so if you're participating in the language and culture program, all students live with host families. The reason behind that is that um, we want you to be immersing yourself um, as much as possible in the language. And the best way to be doing that is to be living with a local family. Um, and so then you're exchanging over dinner in French, um, you know, you're, you're listening, um, to the host family, you know, chat amongst their self, themselves, um, as well, um, starting to get some of those sort of, um, verbal, um, ticks and getting used to, um, you know, hearing French all the time. Um, and then for our fashion in Paris program, all of those students live in a residence with, um, program leaders. The question I about, see some uh, the hands norm. up as well. I oh, don't yeah. know everyone's but, asked their question maybe in the chat already. There's also a question from Angelina on the how many people are in each summer programs. I don't think we addressed that, but I feel like it can be up as high as like 75 students We've... for a single session. Mm -hmm. yes. um, but then can you explain how students are split in small groups to make sure that yeah. you know, it's always like a small group experience, even though Absolutely. the cohort itself is, is bigger? Absolutely. Um, so yes, we may have um, large groups. Um, Paris is a popular destination, and we love um, we love that students are interested to come um, and study with us. Um, but yes, you're not just in sort of a, a herd of um, 75 students. Um, classes are um, really limited to about 15 students per class. Um, so you're getting that um, individual attention from your instructor, um, making sure that. <clears throat> Um, you know, you're getting a chance to um, be speaking, um, be using the language that really is the objective um, of those morning French classes. Um, and then later on in the afternoon, meeting with your program leader. Um, and so we have a program leader for about um, every 10 to 12 students. Um, and so that program leader is somebody who checks in with you daily and weekly, um, making sure, you know, everything's going smoothly with your classes and um, your host family, um, you know, helping you with, you know, um, any culture shock or homesickness, anything like that. Um, and then same as for cultural um, activities in the afternoons, um, we have a couple activities where we're all together in a larger group. Um, uh, for example, our boat tour, um, we have an end of program sort of farewell cocktail um, where we privatize a, a little cafe in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. 
Um, but most of our activities, we, we break up into um, three or four groups to make sure that, um, you know, you're able to um, hear guides, you're able to have an interactive, um, an interactive visit. Uh, One thing I wanted to say about program leaders that we did mention is that um, it, most of them are high school teachers, U.S. high school teachers by training. And they do, um, mm -hmm. and we hire them as a, as a summer job. Mm -hmm. So it means that there are um, adults who are not only very used to working with American teens, mm -hmm. uh, but there are also uh, usually, especially for their language and culture program, they are teaching that language in a U.S. high school. So they're very in tune with what students, um, how students are learning the, the program and can really support them in the best way possible. They are not just a chaperone, if you will, they're kind of like a learning bridge between the students and the local teacher so that when they take the kids on an excursion, they're able to relate to what they learn in the morning in the classroom. So mm -hmm. that uh, you know, they, they make sure that they use the vocabulary that they should know uh, around that um, experience, et cetera. Absolutely. Really? And we have several who have signed on who have um, worked with us in Paris several summers in a row um, already, you know, set up for this coming summer. And we're, you know, we're so excited to have them back. Um, yeah, they really are sort of that entrance into the into the city. Um, um, you know, and a great resource um, because so many of them have, you know, studied abroad themselves and, and really understand um, that experience. Um, I see there's a question about um, emergency contact. Um, so CIEE, um, the US-based staff has a um, an emergency contact number for parents um, to call and all of our students um, have emergency numbers for all of our program leaders as well as a rotating CIEE Paris staff emergency phone number. Um, so, um, students can reach out to, you know, their specific program leader as well as any of the other um, um, program leaders in their program. Um, um, uh, there's the question about are we able to fly there if needed? Honestly, it's not something that we would encourage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, Barrett, but we're sure, really trying yeah. to troubleshoot with students yeah, absolutely. who go through, um, you know, and I think if the if the concern is about being up to date on, you know, any issues that your student might be facing, if they need to see a doctor or if they're dealing with maybe um, a medical emergency, I guess the, the sure. question is around medical emergency. So in that case, I mean, of course, we've we've seen that happen. Yes. If he's yeah. like in the hospital. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, but in that case, you know, our staff, um, you know, our, our first priority is making sure that, you know, the student on site is getting the medical attention that they need, um, as well as making sure that um, we're staying in touch with um, a student's, um, you know, parents or guardians. Um, I see a question about um, how do we place students, pair students and place students into families? Yes, um, we do take interest into account. Um, so a couple things. Um, uh, so definitely if you're applying to the program, um, you'll see there's uh, there are several parts of the application, including um, a housing form, including um, about your interests and hobbies. Um, and that is all taken into account. Um, our staff reads over those applications um, and we really are. Um, doing our best to, you know, match um, um, students um, to families who have interests in common, making sure that um, we're being sensitive to, you know, any um, allergies or, um, you know, uh, medical concerns that you've noted to us on your application as well. Um, we do have students that request maybe to, you um, room with uh, another student that they know is participating on the program. We do our absolute best to honor those requests. Sometimes it's not possible just based on, um, you know, how many families can offer, um, you know, multiple placements in their home or, um, you know, of course that has to come second to any concerns like allergies or um, um, special diets or um, medical concerns. 
Um, but yes, it is a, a, a finely honed process um, that our staff really does take the time to be um, um, meeting with families, um, understanding their interests, things that they like, um, so that um, we're finding a family and a student that has some things in common. There's a question about dress code. I don't know if the answer is different if you go on the fashion program or. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do have suggestions. Um, you know, we always give our students a head up, heads up if there's maybe a dress code for a specific day of the program. Um, um, and, um, you know, that's something that we'll, we'll give students a heads up for, you know, make sure to pack a raincoat or make sure to be wearing, you know, comfortable shoes that you can walk long distances in. Um, we've gone, um, for the language and culture program. Um, we learn about the Francophone world. Um, we go to the Grand Mosque of Paris. Um, we learn about that, um, the history of that place. And we, um, go and have um, a tea ceremony, it's a lot of fun, um, but um, that requires a specific um, dress code for that day. So we always send a reminder. Other than that, you know, it's um, Paris summers can be fairly hot. Um, and so in our know before your go um, course, um, we have sort of a, a packing list and things that we suggest that students bring. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it, it gets really hot in the summer, Paris, and it's a good thing to remember also Unlike the U.S., there's no air condition in a lot of the homes. Uh, no. So I think packing for... And in the center uh, as yeah, well. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is important. We don't, yeah, we don't have um, general air conditioning just because yep. the buildings the buildings are so old. Um, it can be tough to, you know, off them with... Um, with and usually people systems. are great about working around that. You know, they, they keep yes. shutters off during the daytime to like keep exactly. things cool inside. So Parisians we have water work around misters that, but... that we use to, to stay cool. At the cool. cafes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, drinking lots of water. And again, that's where our staff, you know, is accustomed to that and happy to provide tips. Um, um, I think question about transportation. That's a great question. Um, so it's not an additional cost that is included um, in the cost of the program. Um, uh, that's, uh, if you are applying to the program, please, please, please make sure that you're giving us, um, a nice ID photo of yourself. We do need that, um, to create your transportation pass. We do that for all students before they arrive, um, and make sure their card is, um, loaded up and ready to go. Um, so as soon as you arrive, um, we provide students with their transportation card, um, and so they use either, um, uh, the metro or the bus system, generally the metro system to get from um, whose family or the residents to classes um, and to visits. Um, we do actually take students um, into the metro um, and, you know, give them safety tips and our host families um, on the first day, um, you know, show students how to, to get from, um, um, from their homes to the CIE center. It's pretty cool to see students um, getting, you know, independent like that. You know, mm -hmm. you would be surprised and, and you'll surprise yourself um, there. It sounds a little scary initially uh, to mm -hmm. be like, oh, wow, commute on my own. But uh, mm -hmm. it's really uh, an easy process. And then you, you'll amaze yourself. I think I it's something yeah. that we see with students maybe on the first day or two or something that students will mention it to us um, at the airport. Um, we'll talk about, you know, things you're most excited for, maybe most, you know, nervous about. Um, and, um, you know, that that's generally one that we hear. Um, and by about midway through the first week, we'll check in with those students again and say, how's the metro going? And generally they feel absolutely fine. Just because within the first few days, you'll be using the Metro to be getting back and forth to your host family, um, back and forth to cultural activities, um, you know, out with your friends, maybe to be going to a visit or going to a cafe during free time. Um, and so just the sheer amount of times you'll use it um, throughout the day, you get accustomed very quickly. I can take the, the question between sure. of the difference between Paris, Paris and Toulouse. Toulouse I grew yeah. up in Toulouse <laughs> yeah, that would and be I great. worked for a long time in Paris. Mm -hmm. so I know both cities really well. Um, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, the obvious difference is that Paris is the, you know, the French postcard. So all of the famous monuments that you're going to see in Paris like makes that really special. Uh, Toulouse is more um, 
is less known. Uh, it's the fourth largest city in France, and it's a very young city. Like it has a lot of universities, um, so it has a very different uh, vibe to it, more casual than Paris, more laid back. Um, I would say that both programs are wonderful. Um, both programs, the language programs, um, offer the same range of language levels, so one, two, three. Uh, so you could, you know, consider both. Um, tend to think that Toulouse is a great, like if you've never really traveled alone or it's just, it's a smaller scale city in a way. So I feel like it may be less intimidating uh, than Paris um, just because it's a smaller city. So the, the center mm -hmm. is really compact and easy to navigate. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, um, both opportunities are are uh, really wonderful. I feel like in Paris you'll get to really see the highlights of you know what makes uh, Paris and France kind of shine. Uh, in Toulouse, you may get a deeper insight into uh, what regional cultures can look like in France. You know, not everything mm -hmm. in France is like Paris, and that's kind of cool and unique to see that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it it really depends on uh, what you're interested in and uh, what you want to see. But both are equally exciting. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Um. So for the housing, when you request, um, can you like request a specific gender to like be with, mm -hmm. like um, religious wise yeah. or something? Mm -hmm. So students are yeah. always paired by gender. So you won't be placed with uh, someone who's from a different gender. Um, and usually we try to pair students based on language level, I believe. So, right, Barrett? Um, well, actually, that can vary. Not always. Not always, no, yeah, that's right. Not always, um, which can be, I think, um, a nice part of sort of those evening meals with host families. Um, um, also, um, for the free flight ticket till December 1st, um, yep. what are the requirements for that you need to complete your application by december 1st at midnight so it means like a full complete application if you're applying to a scholarship you need to finalize your uh, scholarship application as well so anybody who's done basically by midnight on on december 1st will be entered into the raffle um how do you know if you win you'll get notified by email. Okay, thank you. Yep. I see a couple other questions. Um, how do students travel from the airport to the host family? Um, this depends a little bit on sessions. Sometimes we have host families that will come to the airport to meet their students if they have um, a car, not all host families do. Um, otherwise, um, our program leaders um, will chaperone shuttles um, and help drop students off at their um, at their host families' um, apartments. Um, and I see a question about commuting. Um, so the max commute time um, is one hour. I would say in general, um, it's more around 30 minutes, <clears throat> um, 30 minutes commuting in the metro, which is, is pretty typical for, for Paris. Um, yes, I think you would, yeah, parents, students paired based student. on language level, no. Can students um, request to be in a home near other students lodging? Not really, we don't really. No. Um, I would say, you know, we do get requests for students who want to be, you know, living together at a host family who can accommodate, you know, two students at their home. Um, but geographically, we don't necessarily always have, you know, our, our host families um, are, um, you know, all over um, the different districts of Paris, as well as the close suburbs. Um, and so we may not have, you know, a host family specifically, maybe right down the block um, from another host family. But that being said, you know, um, students are able, you know, have ample opportunities to spend time together, even if they're not in the same language, um, language level um, during cultural activities, during free time, during weekend trips. Um, yeah. Oh, if you're in Toulouse, can you visit Paris? 
It's no, not part of the schedule, no. And students um, on program um, um, aren't able to travel independently. I was going to say maybe the, they have one weekend where their host family can take them places, right? Yeah, but so there is a, a pretty free big weekend. For family that's to take a, yeah, to take that's a parents. pretty yeah, that's a pretty big expense. We do have some host families, for example, that may have like a country home, um, or um, you know, may want to visit family, maybe an hour away. But um, Paris to Toulouse is a pretty that's a pretty big trip. Mm -hmm. I can talk about the application process. Sure, There's yeah. two parts of the application process. Um, there is the um, program application uh, and then the scholarship application. So if you apply to a scholarship, uh, we will process those scholarship applications by um, January 18th and is the, the deadline. So you'll hear back from us at the end of January, typically, like if you if you qualify for a scholarship or not. If you do not require a scholarship to travel and just uh, fill out a program application, you will uh, hear back from us within the next week or two, uh, just making sure that you meet the base eligibility criteria for the program. Uh, like if you have the, the right number of uh, French, high school French years, for example, if you apply for a French program, um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That answers your question. I see a question about students have opportunity to visit French universities during the program. Um, so during a walking tour, we show students where the Sorbonne University is, um, but in general, university um, you know, campus tours are not the same as they are in the United States. Um, and so they don't generally offer um, you know, offer tours to prospective students. You know, it's something, you know, if a student was very interested in a university, maybe could set up during free time or, um, you know, over the host family weekend. Um, but in general, yeah, and many, for session two, many of the universities will be closed for um, the summer holidays. Um, it's just a little bit different culturally than, than in the U.S. where, you know, over the summer, um, you know, lots of prospective students are, are heading to universities to be, to be doing campus tours and visits. As far as the difference between Paris and the Hen, the, the Hen is an advanced French program. So it means that you can only apply if you have two years mm -hmm. of French. Um, and usually, even though we have like level two and three students there, so varying degrees of language proficiency. Um, it's a program where we put the bar higher in terms of staying in the target language. Mm -hmm. So on all our programs, students are expected to interact in the target language, but we enforce that more closely uh, in Ren, where um, like staying in the target language affects your grade um, and is really just encouraged. So usually Ren, we, we uh, direct students to Ren who are like, uh, very comfortable in French, who are uh, really excited to be challenged in uh, being immersed in French. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's the right program for you if you have a comfortable level in French and really try to want to push yourself. Um, if you're more still learning, um, you probably want to look at Paris and Toulouse. Will the grade to our, go to our GPA? No, it would affect your grade uh, with CIE. We um, we uh, we do give a final grade on the mm -hmm. on the program. It would not affect your school. GPA. Not your high school GPA, no. Um... Does your essay have to meet a certain expectation? Uh, yes, we do have a great blog article that I can post here. If you give me a second, around mm -hmm. like writing your scholarship essay. Um, if any of you know um, an alumni in your school also, um, I would say it's a, it's a great resource to kind of like talk to them about like, you know, what did they write about in their scholarship essay or if they can share what they wrote to, so that you can see. Um, but the scholarship essays are really, uh, they really are a defining factor in helping us understand like what your objectives are for the program, what your, um, uh, why you're applying and, and your mindset. So make sure that you you paint the best picture uh, in those essays. I'll try to put a um. Yeah, there we go. 
I don't, I don't know if you guys can see this link, but that should help. Yeah, it just popped up. Uh, there is another information for Ren. It's actually happening right now at the same time. Um, but what we'll do is once all of those meetings are over this week, we will post all the recordings. So you'll be able to, uh, to, to look at the recording, Elena. So I see a question. If you're in French 3, would you recommend beginner or advanced language program? You know, it's hard to say because French 3 can look a little bit different from one school to another. And also it depends on sort of where your strengths are, um, whether, you know, you feel really comfortable um, speaking, whether when, you're sp when your instructor speaks to you in French, are you able to understand easily? Um, I think that's maybe, you know, the, those are maybe the questions to be asking yourself. I think if you're saying yes to a lot of those questions, you know, you can listen to short videos in French and understand most things. Um, you know, you feel really comfortable um, maybe doing a short presentation in French. Um, you know, that could be something where you're, you're, you might be more interested in an advanced program, but also knowing that, you know, um, Paris and Toulouse programs also offer, you know, um, level three <clears throat> as well. So the question, on college credit, um, mm -hmm. it's provided by our school of record, Tulane University, um, but it's not something you have to sign up for. It's, a, it's optional. Mm -hmm. It has a $150 fee attached to it, which is not something that we keep. It's the, the transcript fee for Tulane. Um, and you typically receive them um, if you pass the, you know, fin complete the program successfully, mm -hmm. uh, you would get them uh, by December in a sealed envelope. And mm -hmm. then uh, you'd be able to share that with the, the college that you were getting in to be able to get uh, four college credits yeah. transferred. Um, and it does not, um, uh, not everyone is placed in the same class and, um, you know, anyone oh, yeah. in any level can choose the college credit option. We don't divide students up based on college credit option. No. And students are placed. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, go ahead. The placement. So um, um, we have all students um, in the language programs um, take a proficiency test. Um, and then um, we receive those results. Um, and so do we do a first placement before you arrive? Um, and then the first day of orientation, you meet with the instructor um, who we've done um, a first placement with. Um, and that instructor will do, um, you know, short interviews with each student um, who's um, been placed in their class to ensure that that student is in the correct level. And then the first day of class, they do the same, make sure that every student is in the right, um, is in the correct level based on um, their language skills. Um, so we really do, you know, a couple different yeah. checks to make sure everyone's in the, in the Yeah, the, the idea really is to keep you in a small group of mm -hmm. students who are at a similar level as you, just so that everybody gets a chance to really uh, grow and be challenged. So yeah. don't worry too much about the, the placement process. It's, it's really designed mm -hmm. to help you be in the in the best place and what i'll say also about the placement test um we use stamp test which is a, a mm -hmm. test that a lot of schools in the us use as well uh, and the beauty of that test is that we have you take before you travel to help you place in the right mm -hmm. class and then also at the end on your last week of program you'll you'll take it again so that we'll be able to show you uh, the difference in your score and kind of like how you grew out of the program and on mm -hmm. average, across our language programs, like students learn in one month with us what they typically would learn in a whole year of high school. Mm -hmm. So usually it's not uncommon for students when they go back to school in the U.S. to place in a higher level mm -hmm. um, of, uh, of the language. So that's, uh, that's exciting and something that you can prove with, you know, the, the score. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, if you've already taken the stamp test, we will have you take it again. The reason being is that, you know, your scores will fluctuate um, and we want to make sure that, you know, that that score is really current. Um, 
Um, and again, there's a couple different checks so that we're making sure, you know, even if you feel like you didn't, you know, you didn't do your absolute best um, that, you know, then you'll have an interview with an instructor and then they'll see how you're faring in class to make sure that that is the, the right level. So money, um, you know, those are really things that we'll, we'll also be covering um, um, in the Know Before You Go course, um, which is available to all students who have applied as well as, you know, any of our pre-departure information. Um, but essentially, yes, you can bring, you know, your own um, money. Um, all meals are included on the program, you know, all program fees, all entrances um, to, um, you know, museums and things during cultural activities. Um, but if you'd like to, you know, spend your own money, do some souvenir shopping, um, that sort of thing, you can absolutely do that. We do encourage students to come with um, um um, access to some money. Um, the easiest way to um, do that really is to um, have a debit card that you can use. Um, you can exchange money, um, but in general, the, the fees are fairly high. Um, so we do really suggest having access to a debit card. Um, um, and that way you can be using that to, to you know, for any personal expenses um, while you're on site. Question about the difference so, between Paris Ren and Ren is yeah. interesting. I actually, um, I actually studied abroad in Ren um, when I was a student, um, right. and I lived there um, for a couple of years. Um, you know, in terms of the programs, um, the difference that you're going to see. So, um, the um, the language curriculum um, is very similar from um, one city to the next. Um, we'll have different examples so that we can be using sort of local. Um, uh, local examples that you have an attachment to, you know, the city that you're studying in, um, but really the base of the language courses are the same. Um, in terms of cultural activities, things in Rennes and Toulouse are going to look a little bit different than visits in Paris, um, where, you know, you may recognize some of the cultural activities that you might be doing in Paris, um, as opposed to maybe not knowing as much about um, some of the um, monuments, museums, and destinations in Rennes and um, Toulouse. Um, but one of the differences certainly that you'll see um, um, uh, Toulouse and Rennes, you'll hear, um, you'll hear a lot less English, um, being spoken, mm -hmm. whereas Paris is a very international city. And so, um, you know, of course there's a ton of French everywhere. Um, but you'll also be hearing a fair amount of English from, um, you know, international people who live here from tourists. Um, whereas in Rennes, um, and in Toulouse, you're going to be confronted a lot more, um, with French. Um, you know, the, the size of the city is different. Um, so, um, even as compared to Toulouse, Rennes is um, a fair bit smaller. It's more around um, 250, 300,000 people. Um, so parts of it feel like sort of a, a little village. Um, you know, Brittany is, um, you know, has the, you know, sea to the, an hour to the north, an hour to the south. Um, so that definitely affects um, somewhat of the city. It's um, got a really beautiful historical center. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, very similar to what Pierre was saying about maybe, um, you know, if this is your first time, um, if this is your first time um, coming to France, if the idea of living in a large city like Paris sounds a little bit intimidating to you, um, you know, a city like Rennes or Toulouse can be a great option. Also, knowing that, um, you know, Rennes offers the advanced language program. So if you're really looking to, you know, push your language skills, if you already are feeling, you know, fairly comfortable in French, that can be, um, that can be a good option. I see a raised hand, Noran. Did you have a question, Noran? Yes, I had a question about the essay. Yes. Um, does it have to like meet a specific standard? Uh, we have a rubric to evaluate those, but I don't think we share those. I think it should be. Uh, I think you have a certain number of words to to meet, and that should be spelled out in the application. Thank you, Joel, for joining. I see, the, see you're you're leaving us. Um, but no, I don't have a more specific answer than that for you, Nora. And sorry. 
Okay, thank you. Question about the council fees. The program will be fully refunded if CIE cancels it. That's something we had to deal with a lot in the past couple of years, as you can imagine with the pandemic, but not since last year, so that's good. Um, if you need yourself to cancel, uh, parts of it can be refundable. You have to look at the terms and condition. It kind of lists, like the, the, the longer you wait to cancel, basically the, the, um, uh, the lower amount you can get back. Um, reason for that is a, a lot of the cost for us to set up those programs is up front, you know, booking uh, facilities, booking uh, teachers, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, so the, the terms and conditions really spell out uh, how much money you can get back by when. So make sure you pay attention to that if that's something that you're concerned about. I think we're uh, a little past the hour and I want to be uh, respectful of Barrett's time who's mm -hmm. late into the evening here. Mm -hmm. So unless there's any burning question from anyone, uh, one time, two times, <laughs> I think we'll call it a night and you know, always know that you can uh, reach out to our team. I'm going to mm -hmm. put our email address here again. Um, I uh, salute you for, you know, trying to, uh, looking into studying abroad, it's just really the, the best thing um, you could be doing next summer. You're gonna grow uh, in ways you can't even imagine. Both that, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the, the language skills and the hard skills, but really the number one benefit of going abroad is growing into you know, a more independent self, mm. uh, being more globally aware, uh, just a more mature person you'll, grow through the experience that, that you have. You'll go through the, the other students that you'll meet also, uh, because you'll get to, to meet students from all over the US on those programs. It makes those programs really special. And our scholarship program really um, open access to a wide variety of, uh, of uh, students. So you'll, you may meet students who um, don't look like the students who are in your home community based on where you live. So it's a great just social mixer and you'll you'll get a lot out of just that uh, in and of itself. So I um, encourage you to consider it, to apply to the scholarship because we we do administer the biggest scholarship program for high school students. Uh, so make sure that you, you take a shot at that. And um, yeah, and don't hesitate to reach out to our team if you, if you need any further info. Do you have any parting word, Barrett? No, just looking forward to looking forward to seeing your applications and um, um, yeah, telling you more about uh, more about the program. I hope um, um, I hope some of these details were were of interest to you and um, um, yeah, I hope you're getting excited about um, about traveling and about studying abroad, about honing those French skills. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Merci beaucoup. Bye-bye.